So by this point, you're an expert on evaluating binomial probabilities and using the four requirements to determine if it is binomial. And we're going to spend one more section with the binomial before we move on to a different probability distribution. And uh, in 5.4, we want to look at the mean and the standard deviation of the binomial. But let me, um, let me illustrate this with an example. Um, when I teach this in class, I actually give everybody a coin and have them flip their coin 10 times. And then everybody comes up to the board and writes down how many flips, uh, how many heads they got out of 10. And you can imagine what will happen, right? Some people get fives and some people get sixes or fours. Um, and a few people might get a seven or a three. And if you're, something really weird happens, there might be a number even more extreme than that. Um, so uh, we can't do that together on the board, but let's simulate. Um, the StatDisk app has a coin toss simulator. Uh, so it's right here. And um, there's 57 of you in the class plus uh, Christine and myself. So 59 people would have been flipping coins. So let's go uh, 59 people, uh, each tossing a coin 10 times. Uh, I don't need to fill in a random seed. It'll pick one on its own. And let's put the results into column one and generate. Okay, so again, this is kind of what actually... It's not necessarily what I would have expected, but that's the nature of randomness. There's a lot of fours and threes and even a two to start things off. But then there's some sixes. All right, it's taking us a while to get our first five right there at number 16. Uh, but anyway, yeah, there's there's 59 people all, cost, all tossing a coin 10 times and, and writing down their number of heads. So here's the thought question for you. Uh, what do you think is the average of this list? And that is the question in general, is what should a binomial experiment average? Obviously, it won't happen every time, but what would be the average after you do it lots and lots and lots of times? Um, so think for a minute about what you think the average would be, and then I will go and get us the answer. Uh, so under uh, data, we can do the explore data and get the descriptive statistics. And let's go and get the descriptive statistics for column one. Oops, evaluate. And the average, the mean of all of those is 4.9. So is that close to what you would have guessed? Um, let's look at the histogram there. Um, it's not it's not normal. There's this kind of big dip right at five, actually. but. Um, you got some twos, got some more threes, got a lot of fours. For some reason, not very many fives, a lot of sixes, sevens, a few eights. Um, so yeah, the average is about five, which is probably what you would have guessed when you're having possible answers ranging from zero to 10. And a 50-50 chance, right? Um, the uh, standard deviation is not so easy to guess here. Uh, the standard deviation is about 1.4-ish. Um, but let's talk about how we could figure that out without running a simulation. Um, so there are formulas. <clears throat> if you have a binomial, uh, then there's a formula for the mean. Um, there's also a formula for the standard deviation. Um, and the mean the formula, uh, when I write it out, is pretty simple. That's it, uh, n times p. And just to make the notation clear here, uh, the n is the number of trials, how many times you flipped that coin, and p uh, is the probability of success. Uh, so for our particular example, Uh, where we're looking at 10 flips of a coin. Uh, the mean uh, would have been n, the number of trials, which is 10, times the probability of success, which is 0.5. So we'd say the mean uh, is 10 times 0.5, which is 5. Again, 
no big shock there. Uh, the standard deviation formula uh, is a little less intuitive and I'm not going to prove it to you or anything, but I will just say that the standard deviation formula involves a square root. And since we know where standard deviations come from and like squaring the deviations and then square rooting, maybe it's not a surprise that you get the square root in the formula. Uh, but the formula is the square root of, and then there's n, uh, and there's p, just like before. And then there's q. Um, and q is our new letter. And q is the probability of failure. If you have the probability of success, you should also know the probability of not succeeding. Um, for us, in our example, the standard deviation of how many heads you'll get out of 10 flips of a coin. The standard deviation should be square root of 10 times the probability of success, which is getting ahead, which is 0.5, and the probability of not succeeding, which is, in this particular example, is also 0.5. Um, in general, these two numbers always have to add to one, right? The probability of succeeding and the probability of failing together should add up to one. Uh, okay, so this is a calculator problem. I can't do that one in my head. So the square root of 10 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5. Uh, so 10 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 is 2.5, and then the square root of that's about 1.6-ish. Uh, so approximately 1.6. And notice that's not exactly how our particular sample came out. Um, our particular sample had a mean of 4.9 and a standard deviation of 1.4. Uh, and these numbers, again, are not designed to predict a particular sample. They are designed to predict the population of all possible 10 flips of a coin ever. Um, so these are like population values, not sample values. Now, the sample should come out pretty close to the population unless something really weird is happening. Um, but with these population values, uh, we can now answer the final question that we often like to ask uh, when we have a mean and a standard deviation, uh, which is what would be unusual when you flip a coin 10 times? What's usual versus unusual? Uh, so let's look at that. Uh, keep in mind the rule of thumb that we've used in the past. It says if you have the mean and you go one, two standard deviations up and one, two standard deviations down, uh, that should be everything that's usual. Anything outside of that would be unusual. Uh, so let's look at our particular predictions. For the flip of a coin, flip 10 flips of a coin, uh, the mean should be 5. And then the standard deviation is about 1.6. So if we add 1.6 and add 1.6 uh, to get to this upper end, that's 5 plus 3.2, so that's 8.2. And on the other end is you take 5 and you subtract 1.6 and subtract 1.6. Uh, that gets you to 1.8. Uh, so when you flip a coin 10 times, it would be considered usual to get anything in this range. So granted, you can't have decimals. So usual would be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, <laughs> and 8. Um, anything unusual? Uh, would be to flip a coin 10 times and get 9 heads, or 10 heads, or 1, or 0. Right? So these would be 
unusual. And everything in the green uh, would all be considered usual results. Uh, so your homework on 5.4 uh, is going to ask you to do just this. Uh, they're going to say, hey, here's a binomial situation. Uh, find the mean. Find the standard deviation. And then talk about usual versus unusual. Um, and the only thing I really wanted to point out here was just that um, the probability, of course, does not have to be 0.5. Um, so just as a quick final example, um, suppose that you had something where the probability of success was like 0.3. So 30% of the time you succeed at doing this. And let's do 25 attempts or 25 trials just for the fun of it. So uh, just to be clear there, the mean, uh, when you do this thing, whatever it is, you do it 25 times and succeed about 30% of the time. So whatever that comes out to, let's see, that's 7.5, I believe. Now you'd expect to get an average of 7.5 and the standard deviation uh, would be 25 times 0.3, which is the probability of success, times 0.7 which is the probability of failure. Um, and that one I can absolutely not do in my head. So uh, whatever that comes out to. Uh, but then you could still talk about usual versus unusual uh, by getting your, getting your 7.5 and going up two standard deviations and down two standard deviations. All right, next section, we're moving on to a new distribution called the Poisson.